China has achieved some pretty good unbeatable world records, and they're all outstanding in their own way. From launching 22 satellite rockets into space in a single launch, to having the first Chinese woman astronaut spacewalk. Stay tuned to the end as we're about to uncover the most surprising records set by China. At number 10, the artificial sun. China's nuclear fusion reactor took the world by surprise by creating an artificial sun that is five times hotter than the actual one. The artificial sun is a project known as the Experimental Advanced Superconducting Tokamak, or EAST. The device, housed in a research facility in Haifei, Anhui Province, China, smashed global records after maintaining a nuclear reaction at 70 million degrees Celsius, 158 million degrees Fahrenheit, for more than 17 minutes. EAST achieved another record by operating for 101 seconds at an astonishing 120 million degrees Celsius, 216 million degrees Fahrenheit. The natural sun's core temperature is roughly 15 million degrees Celsius, or 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. EAST isn't a flying orb of light hurled into the sky. Instead, it's a donut-shaped reactor chamber with a high magnetic field that traps heated up plasma. EAST is nicknamed the artificial sun because its energy generation technique, termed nuclear fusion, mimics the sun's physics. The purpose of this sun is not to provide light or heat, but rather to generate a massive quantity of renewable energy that researchers plan to use to power cities. It's genuinely record-breaking. At number 9, it's the first country to the far side of the moon. According to official media, China's Chang'e 4 Lunar Explorer is the first ever probe to soft land on the moon's far side. The landing lifted the enigmatic curtain from the far side and started a new chapter in human lunar exploration. The Chinese media documented the six-wheeled rover as it landed in the southern region of the Von Karman crater, near the moon's south pole. While the probe was on the way, China's lunar lander was equipped with various cameras and sensors, including ground-penetrating radar, to peek under the lunar surface. Before this time, only 12 people had ever stepped foot on the moon. They were all Americans. Even though it receives sunlight, the moon's far side is frequently incorrectly referred to as the dark side. Traveling to the moon's far side involves several technological problems, such as making communication more difficult. Although Chang'e 4's mission is primarily scientific, it is also an essential step towards transporting Chinese humans to the lunar surface. Interestingly, from the updates, it's been noted that there are rocks over 4 billion years old across the far side. These scientists are interested in knowing how they appear up close. That's a huge step forward for China. At number 8, the first Chinese woman astronaut to spacewalk. On November 7, 2021, astronaut Wang Yaping became the first Chinese woman to walk in space. She attained this record-breaking title when she stepped outside the Tiangong space station after her crew completed a six-hour term as part of the space station's continuing development. Tiangong, dubbed Heavenly Palace, is the latest success in China's push to become a significant space power after landing a rover on Mars and the launch of probes to the moon. Wang and her colleague Zhai Zhigang exited the module, waved to the camera while tethered to the exterior of the station, and placed a suspension mechanism and transfer connections. This is the first extravehicular activity of the Zhenzhou 13 crew and the first in China's space history featuring the involvement of a female astronaut. The whole procedure was easy and successful, the agency stated before calling it complete. At number 7, 22 satellites in a single launch. China's Long March 8 rocket achieved a new record at the Wengchang Orbit Launch Center in South China's Hainan Province when it sent 22 satellites into space. China became the third nation in the world to master the technique when it sent three satellites into orbit with a single rocket launch in 1981. The science of a single rocket taking off with numerous satellites on board is pretty challenging because all satellites must be stacked appropriately apart, like passengers in a highly packed car. In addition, after the rocket reaches its release point, the doors must be opened to allow the satellites to exit. 
The timing is set so that the satellites have enough time to avoid colliding with one another. Only five nations, including the European Space Agency, have the technology currently. At number 6, Deep Blue Space Rocket Deep Blue Aerospace, a Chinese launch company, has successfully launched a tiny rocket test stage to a height of one kilometer before conducting a powered descent and a vertical landing. The company, created in 2017, completed the test on May 6th at site in Tongchuan, Shangzi Province. Using the Nebula M1 test item, landing within less than half a meter of the landing pad bullseye, Huo Lang, Deep Blue Aerospace's founder, told Space News that the company is looking to generate cash from the commercial launch contracts and government initiatives like National Satellite Internet Project and the Space Station. The test represents a substantial step forward in constructing the entire Nebula 1 rocket with a recoverable first stage, as well as developments and attempts by Chinese launch entrepreneurs to create reusable launchers. China's Aerospace Science and Technology Corp, the country's main space contractor, is also investigating reusability with its Long March 8 rocket based on existing Long March rockets, while CASC's Shanghai Academy of Space Flight Technology is developing a reusable variant based on the Long March 6. CASC is also working on a new reusable launcher with three cores for human spaceflight. Its Long March 9 Super Heavy Lift rocket may also be recoverable. Number 5. The First Country to Build a Moon Base In June of 2021, Russia and China jointly unveiled the Moon Base project. This happened after both countries had signed an Intergovernmental Memorandum of Agreement in March of the same year. The International Lunar Research Station will consist of an orbiter, a lunar surface base, and numerous exploratory rovers. Other nations are still welcome to join the initiative. The ILRS will be an interdisciplinary research institution with several purposes. The government intends to send three missions to the moon during the next five years. The first will be Chang'e 6, launching a lunar probe to gather samples from the lunar surface's polar regions. Chang'e 7's second mission will send another search to identify dark areas in the polar regions via hopping detection. Chang'e 8, the third, will signal the commencement of moon base construction. At number 4, China's Giant Airship China began a 24-hour test flight of its most enormous blimp near Jilin Hot Inner Mongolia on October 13, 2015. The Yuan Mang is 18,000 cubic meters in capacity, 75 meters long and 22 meters tall. It will fly to 20,000 meters to test its control systems and capabilities in near space flight. The Yuan Mang will be the most enormous solar-powered airship in the world after solar panels are mounted on its roof. Using solar electricity to power its rotor saves weight and increases the payload, giving it a total flying duration of six months. The sun would also power the Yuan Mang's 5 to 7 ton cargo of data relays, data links, cameras, and other sensors. CAIGA, a subsidiary of China Aviation Industry Group, has teamed with Flying Whales, a French business, to create giant airships, with a 60 ton payload freight airship being claimed to their first aircraft. The initiative might begin a more extensive portfolio of giant airships. At number 3, International Lunar Research Station The International Lunar Research Station is a proposed lunar station created by Roscosmos and the China National Space Administration. It is a complex experimental research facility built with the potential attraction of partners on the moon's surface and or in its orbit for multidiscipline and multi-purpose scientific research activities such as moon-based observation, fundamental research experiments, moon exploration and use, and technology verification with the capability of the long-term unmanned process with the prospect of subsequent human presence. The station will be a multidisciplinary and multi-objective scientific research base built on the lunar surface or in lunar orbit capable of carrying out multidisciplinary and multi-objective scientific research activities such as exploration, utilization, base scientific experiment and technical verification, lunar-based observation, and long-term autonomous operation. According to Roscosmos and CNSA, the project would be available to all interested nations and international partners. Number 2. 
Solar panels power Tianzhou. On April 29th, China launched the Tianhe module into space, setting off a series of critical launch missions to complete the space station's construction by the end of 2022. On May 29th, the government launched Tianzhou 2, which docked with Tianhe in around eight hours to provide supplies, equipment, and propellant. June 9th was the coupling of the Tianzhou 2 cargo vehicle with China's space station core module. Luckily, Tianhe has been running well due to adequate power supply. The main module and the cargo craft have their own power supply systems. After docking, the two systems may establish a linked grid and accomplish mutual power transfer. Tianzhu 2 is in sleep mode and has reduced power requirement while docked with the space station. Its solar panels can give enough electricity most of the time. Any excess is stored for astronaut activities and scientific research that need more energy. And number one, the core module will use Tianzhu's engine and fuel to manage the assembly's altitude and orbit after docking. The Tianzhu spacecraft was designed to sustain the lives and activities of the Taikonauts on the China space station. The Tianzhu cargo spaceship is not just a massive storage room, but also serves other functions in orbit. Tianzhu can supply additional energy to the assembly, and its solar panels produce electricity. The electricity it provides might be fed into a power grid, likewise controlled by the core module. In addition, the power grid works both ways. Tianzhu may create electricity and receive power from the core module. The launch of Tianzhu 4 marks the beginning of the crucial building phase of the China space station. Tianzhu's engine and fuel will be utilized by the core module after docking, which will regulate and maintain the assembly's altitude and orbit. When Tianzhu docks with the core module, the space station assembly relies on Tianzhu's engine and fuel. Do you think China's done well for itself and the world? Let us know in the comment section. Stay tuned to our channel for more updates of space news coming your way soon. Thanks for watching.